Welcome to Live Joy Travel. I'm Jess, and today I bring you yet another beautiful Italian city. We are in the most popular one by the name of, what do you think? You guessed it, Rome! our journey through Rome here in the south side of the city and we're actually gonna start with some of the attractions that are not as popular when people come and visit and our first stop is going to be Terme di Caracalla. This were actually imperial baths believe it or not and the walls are about 30 meters high or about 90 feet tall. How crazy is that? Now this imperial baths were open in 2016 AD by Caracalla himself. He was actually following orders from his father to finish this imperial baths. One of the crazy things that I must mention guys is that this were actually still being used in the year 1993 to house Oprah sessions and Oprah concerts and people will come in here. Then they decided to put a stop to it and maintain the integrity of the monument itself until 2001, about 20 years ago, when it reopened its doors as a concert stage for classical music and they made a deal with the Italian government to maintain the integrity of the monument by placing the stage away from it. So here you can watch some classical music in the main bath area when they are on the agenda here in Italy. But from here, make sure that you get your tickets with plenty of time because as you can tell, there's quite a line and with that said we are gonna go to our next <laughs> spot I wonder what that's gonna be so follow me so you can find out as we are walking to our next spot which I highly recommend that you walk you are gonna cross through this beautiful park and you're gonna see lots of regular everyday life just like people training for their hobbies so let's go So guys, a little bit over three quarters of a mile walk later, we have made it to the largest chariot stadium in all of Rome. This place right here is about 600 meters long and at one point it held over 150,000 spectators, guys. That is mind blowing for that time frame and we are here. One of the most popular activities here was the competition of horse-drawn carriages being led by slaves in search of their freedom. They would compete as people cheer them on in hopes of once again having free will. Aside from that though, you would see gladiators, aristocrats, athletes compete. So this was the place to be and with a little bit of imagination you can see right behind me you can almost imagine the horse carriages competing against each other the sounds of the horses on the ground just close your eyes and I think you can almost almost see it let me give you a glance guys for many tourists being here at Circus Maximus it's not the highlight of their trip and they may not find it as spectacular as the Colosseum in my perspective, this is a place that you cannot miss. Entry is free. You can actually walk it. You can get a little bit of history. And for me, it's definitely worth to put it on your list if you find yourself near the Colosseum. But we're gonna stop imagining this for a second and we have to move on to our next spot. So come along with me because I have so much more to show you guys. We have made it yet again to our next spot 
and this one's a very notable one. One of the cool things and that most visitors do not know when they come to Rome is that the arch right behind me is actually the model for all other triumphal arches across Europe and the world. Most people do not know that and yes, you guessed it, it is actually the inspiration and the model for the Triumph one in Paris, which is actually way more popular than this one. But this is the inspiration for it, and now you know. <laughs> Guys, we are now walking towards the Colosseum. It's only a short walk away, so I hope we make it. Let's go. And while we are walking over there, if you like to see more videos like this, please make sure that you subscribe and click that bell. And if you like this video, don't forget to give me a like. Let's go. Guys, the Colosseum is right in the center of the city. And to this day, it is still the biggest, most ancient oval amphitheater, not only in Europe, but in the whole entire world. How crazy and mind-blowing is that? Guys, the history that these walls have seen from gladiator fights to aristocrats to concerts, the list is endless and limitless. The construction for the Colosseum actually began a very long time ago, exactly in 72 AD, and it was completed about eight years later under Titus. And a fun fact is that it was not known as the Roman Colosseum back then, but rather as the Flavian Amphitheater, guys. And what's so crazy is a lot of people don't know this. They thought that it was just gladiator fights and aristocrats, all sorts of things, but they also had exotic animals on display right here. The Colosseum actually is closely connected to religion, and every Good Friday, you will have the Pope do a procession through here to start the celebrations for this weekend and that is pretty amazing in and of itself i could go on and tell you many many more facts about the coliseum but there's so much to see here in rome that we must keep going so on to our next stop come with me and the surrounding areas and we are going to head out towards the forum because that is going to be our next highlight it's going to be quite a little bit of a walk so come along and walk with us so guys we have made it to the forum as you can tell behind me this is actually one of the oldest structures here in all of Rome and they were political buildings and markets at one point in time as well another fun fact about this structure right behind me it was the center of Roman life for many many centuries and I saw many triumphal parades and processions the citizens of ancient Rome actually referred to this place as the Forum Magnum which is not too far from what we call it nowadays now if you do want to do a close-up look you can also pay to get into the structures and I'll give you a look at what they look like from the inside This view 
is amazing but I have another great monument that I have to show you guys and this one you probably have seen in plenty of postcards aside from the Coliseum this one is called the altar of the father or the typewriter and we're gonna be heading over there landmark and that is the Altare de la Patria otherwise known as the monument to Vittorio Emanuele the second the very first king of a unified Italy guys this monument behind me is incredibly incredibly important to all Italians because it signifies their unity one of the interesting facts about this monument is that it's actually not Roman based in architecture but rather Greek Germanic and Teutonian in style which is what makes it so so different from everything else here in Rome so guys on a final note it is important to tell you that this monument right here is extremely tall about 230 feet high and about 443 feet wide just so it kind of gives you an idea of how large this monument is and how many people does it see a day let me just tell you it's quite a lot so guys if you do want to see the museum here at this monument the entry is only five euro but if you'd rather just take an elevator to the very top and get a beautiful view, then you only need to pay seven euro. Guys, if you are on a budget and all you wanna do is just climb up the steps and get a closer view, that is free to do. So come along with us so we can check it out. Italy in 2009 this was actually one of the landmarks that first caught my attention and created an immense love for this country and I can see that it's still just as beautiful as it was back then I've come back many many times ever since but again I continue to be back here so guys I did mention that this is an altar to the nation and as you can tell something that you can't really see unless you walk up close is this right here let me show you and right in the middle of that, you are going to have the tomb of the unknown soldier being guarded and given the respect that it deserves with a wreath. And with that said, we are going to leave this beautiful place and head down to our next stop. So come with me as we head out. So guys, as we're walking away from this, we are going to head towards one of the craziest crossings here in all of Rome. You have traffic coming from all sorts of directions, plus a roundabout. So I suggest you take your time and you're very careful because this is quite tricky. What we are gonna do next, now that we survived that tricky intersection, is that we are gonna walk through some of those Roman streets and we are gonna find us some delicious lunch. And afterwards, we are gonna hit a very important spot, the Trevi Fountain. So guys, we have made it to lunch and we made it to class. Class is a restaurant about 300 feet away from the Trevi Fountain in a spot that I highly recommend for you to hit up either for aperitivo or for lunch. And we got their daily happy hour, which is a spritz. And we will soon get some cheese and bruschetta. And then we're gonna head over and see the Trevi Fountain. So stay tuned, but for us, changing for now my little starting point is going to be some bruschetta with formaggio and it looks delicious mm. 
So guys, today for lunch we decided to indulge and have a beautiful lunch here at class. I got the frutti de mare risotto. As you can tell it has seafood. It looks absolutely delicious. And Adrian got the spaghetti with clams. It's absolutely stunningly delicious. And we are going to dig in some parmesan in our food. And dig in. Buen apetito! <laughs> Alright guys, after a delicious lunch, we are now heading towards the Trevi Fountain. Another very, very, very famous landmark visited by millions during the year. So, let's go check it out. I know! Nico ha tirato la monetina, eh, senza guardare. Guys, here we are, right behind me you have the Trevi Fountain standing at a tall and proud 30 meters high. Guys, this is literally and easily the most popular fountain in the whole entire world, guys. It has been in endless, endless movies from producers across the globe and I bring this to you today. So guys, we are about to head down there. It looks like the band is over and they now allow you to get close to the Trevi Fountain once again. And as usual, it is tradition to make sure that you put your coins in there or you throw them over your shoulder. Now it is, it is often said that the person who throws the coin gets to return to Rome. For us, we wish to return to Rome. It has worked for me several times, so I will do it again. Now, you guys, if you're wondering where the money goes to, all the coins that are actually thrown into the Trevi Fountain go towards a charity, so your money is going someplace good. So come along with me, let's get close, and we're gonna throw those coins in. So guys, we have managed to make it through the crowds and we are ready to do our coin. We wish to return. Yes. Once again. So at the count of one, two, three. And then a kiss to feel it. 